This is a very important moment for all of us from Tehelka who are here today. Because this is, uh, this is to honor a colleague who died earlier this year. Uh, Tarun Shirawat joined us at 19 in the office. And he, he joined us in the back end. And he was somebody that you didn't quite notice in the beginning. Because he was somebody who was a very shy boy with very vivid eyes, but it took a while to notice that. He started at the back end, and then a colleague taught him to use the camera. And the moment he had the camera in his hand, Tarun was a transformed human being. He became the most coveted colleague in the office. He began to create miraculous images, and everybody wanted to go on their assignments with him because he was a wonderful combination of wise temperament, great skill, and a very intuitive moral concern. Tarun himself always chose the most difficult assignments to go on. He would go with many other young Tehelka reporters to the tribal hinterlands that we have spoken of. I'm so sorry. He, he went, as my colleague Sanjay just spoke, to this village called Tad Bitla, where 300 huts had got burned. And he went with another young reporter called Tusha Mittal, who was also just 26 years old. And they took some of the most riveting images of dispossession and injustice. And then in May this year, Tarun Shirawat and Tusha came to me saying that they would like to go on a story inside Abhujmar, which is the <clears throat> which is the Maoist stronghold in Chhattisgarh, where no mainstream Indians have ever been. And I okayed that story. In fact, another photographer was supposed to go with the Shah, but Tarun Shirawat came to me with very lively eyes and actually behind the back of the photo editor and said, ma'am, may I go, please? And I said, yes, and I signed that. And the two of them went 40 kilometers inside Abhujmar. They walked for six, five, six days. They took a lot of water and food and all the first aid kits they needed to. They went against the threat of mines and before going, I told them not to take any unreasonable risk. While they were there, what they felt they were really enduring was just hardship, extreme heat, hostile terrain, and uncertainty of whether mines exist or don't. But just a few months, a month earlier, there had been a huge Indian security forces assault inside Abhijmar. And they wanted to bring back the stories of what really happens there. What really is this mythical place? They were out of reach, mobile reach, because these places are not within mobile reach. They were out of reach for many days. And then they surfaced. They came back, both of them exhilarated and exhausted. I just want to say that when I say that Tarun Sharawat always had an intuitive moral concern, he also had a great sense of joy, and his colleague Tusha Mittal shared that. They loved going to these places. They felt that a spirit guided them. They braved a lot together. They went into forests where there are no paths, where very often guides don't go with you, and where it is an indistinguishable space, where security forces and the Maoists and the Salvajuram don't know which party you belong to. And in that sense, a reporter in that space is representative of what tribal India is going through. But they came back after five days with a wonderful series of pictures, a great story, but both of them were mildly ill. Tarun Sharabut actually was not ill at all. He came back exhilarated. Tusha began to run a small fever. We thought it was exhaustion, heat-related. She stayed back in Chhattisgarh to do some additional reporting. It took them a week to file the story. Tarun Sharawat was asked to take a few days off, but so much was his eagerness that he began to work right away. He began to run a small fever and did not think to inform the office or anybody because fevers in India are so ordinary. We all fall ill, we all take a combi flan, we all go to work. And none of us thought much of it. Because Tusha was alone in Chhattisgarh, we took extra care. Dr. Binayak Sen, the great enemy of the Indian state, 
went to look after her because by then she was running a great fever, about 104, and very scared, took her to a hospital, took care of her. It was a while before we realized that Tarun Shirawat was also very ill. He was admitted into hospital, he was taken the best care of, and then one day on Sunday, he suddenly dipped. He had cerebral malaria, he had typhoid, he had jaundice, and overnight, he suddenly dipped. And I have never seen a human body look the way that boy looked that day on Sunday when we took him to Ames. He was a yellow bloated body, delirious with fever, ballooned out. We rushed him to Medanta where the best medical care was given to him. For mon one month, he was in a coma. And then he resurfaced his youth, his will to live, his unfinished life's project asserted itself. And he was standing again. He was drinking tea. And then on the 15th of June, overnight, without explanation, his brain hemorrhaged. 80% of it was gone. And we had to take him off the life support systems because every doctor said that, in essence, Tarun Shirawat was gone. Through that time, apart from the courage that Tarun you know, brought home to us at Tehelka, we learned a massive lesson from the way Tarun's family conducted themselves. Tarun Shirawat came from a working class background. When he entered Tehelka, he could have chosen many routes. There were many luxury assignments he could have gone for. But he chose the jobs that he wanted to do. And his father, Ranbir Shirawat, who also has worked with Tehelka, his mother and his brother, Arun Shirawat, who also works with Tehelka, in that one month, they watched their son and their brother in the hospital with a degree of dignity and fortitude that is inexplicable and unexplainable and a huge lesson in humility. There was no recrimination. There was no asking why fate should hit them that way. They bore the one month of coma. They bore his resurrection. And they bore his death with the kind of dignified understanding of what and who Tarun Sharawat was. They were proud of the work he did, they were proud of the vision he embodied, and they have not, even in their incredible pain, ever regretted what he stood for. Tarun's death has led to many questions in the Indian media. Many people, even as they shared our grief, many people raised questions about the ethics of sending young people into hostile terrains. As an editor, I have questioned myself very often were we right to send them in? And even as I share our pain with you today, I would like to assert that we have been correct in sending them in, and we would send them in again. Because these are stories that need to be told. Tarun Shirawat died of cerebral malaria. There are epidemic levels of cerebral malaria in this country that we in the Indian media do not focus on. Even we in Tehelka have been so focused on the conflict we never focused on the disease. It kills many thousands of people every year. There is absolutely no attention on it. Not just cerebral malaria, diarrhea, tuberculosis, encephalitis. 50,000 people have died in UP and Bihar out of encephalitis in the last 10, 12 years. There is one hospital in 19 districts that work for encephalitis. The day Tarun came back from the coma, the first thing he asked for was the camera. And very often, when all of this comes home to us, I cling to that. Because even though he had suffered so much when he came back, the first thing he asked for was the instrument of his work. Today, as a journalist, his death bears a, bears a story for us. He exposed the story that, as journalists, we should have been focusing on. There is a hierarchy of attention that shuts this out, that blackens it out and his death made that visible. His death also made visible what we as editors have to confront ourselves all the time, which is what is the boundary of journalism within which we must live? What is worth a story and what is worth dying for? And there was a lot of internal discussions that happened when Tarun Sharawat died. And we came to an understanding that within our office, there are some who push the boundaries because they want to push the boundaries. It is not something that one forces anybody to do. But I refuse to believe as editors that we should live 
within certain subscribed lines, or that youth is incapable or should not be sent out to do the big stories, because it is youth and idealism that drives one to cross the line, to go over to the other side, to tell the stories that no one else wants to tell. So today, we want to install and initiate an award in the name of Tarun Sharawat, an award for journalism of courage under the age of 30. And this would be journalism of any kind, whether it's print, it's television, whether it's photography. It is journalism of courage and conscience, because that is what Tarun Sharawat stood for. And his asking for camera, his camera, reminds us to keep that covenant alive. So even as we announce this award, which we will give away next year, you know, we just wanted to commemorate this by announcing the award. I would like to invite Ranbir and Arun onto the stage, and please join me in giving them a great applause. Soon after Tarun passed away, Arun came to me. He used to work in the computer department. And he asked if he, too, could become a photographer. And I'd just like Arun to share with us why he wants to do that. Good evening, everybody. Namaskar. My name is Arun, as I told you. And I've been connected to Telka, my parents, my father, मम्मी तरुण मैं काफी टाइम से सब को जानते हैं हम काफी छोटे थे कुछ सेकंड थर्ड में तब से पापा तेलका के साथ है या कुछ भी तो तब से ही हमारा लगाव था फिर तरुण ने तेलका ज्वाइन किया फिर मैंने किया मैं आईटी में काम करता था पहले और ये सब होने के बाद फिर मैंने स्विच किया इसमें तो काफी sorry thank you आप सब के लिए Ranbir would just like us to say thank you. Thank you for the faith and thank you for listening to this story. I just wanted to add just one more thing that soon after, it took us a while, a couple of months, three months, to work up the courage again. But very recently, two more of my colleagues, Revati Lal and Vijay, another photographer with Tehelka, went back to these ravaged, disease-ravaged districts and we did a cover story on cerebral malaria. I would really urge you to read that story, to understand that today, the story that came home to us through the death of our colleague is something that literally lakhs of Indians are experiencing on a daily basis, and we are blind to that story. I salute my colleagues for continuing that work. And as I said, even after the introspection is over, I'm still proud that we do the work that we wanted to do. Thank you.